Hi, welcome to Kelsey and today we're looking at the different types of storage that we find inside of a computer system, including primary, secondary and offline storage. And then we're going to look at a couple of examination questions that you would find in the IGCSE syllabus so that you can be exam ready. Even if you're not taking IGCSE, this is super relevant to many other curriculum. So please like and subscribe, and most importantly, click the notification button so that you can be informed every time that I make new content. So all computer systems can be broken down into three main parts. That consists of the central processing unit, our process, and the IO devices, inputs and outputs, as well as storage devices. And today we're going to look at how those storage devices are broken down into these three categories of primary, secondary and offline storage. Within these three main categories are different devices that you're going to need to learn, including their purpose and how they function. Here they are categorized for you. Now the primary and secondary memory, those are internal to the computer. They make up a computer system. The offline storage needs to be mounted to the computer and can be physically held and moved from computer to computer. The first category is primary, that's main memory. This is internal to the computer and is directly accessible by the processor. It's the only storage that the processor directly accesses. All the other storage are accessed through these memories and loaded into the memory when they need to be used. This has the fastest access speed because it's directly accessed by the CPU. The four included with this are ROM. Now, ROM is a read-only memory. It stores the BIOS or the startup instructions for the computer, sometimes called bootstrap. And this is all the instructions required for the computer to begin. Without the BIOS, your computer cannot function and even begin to start up. That's why it is a read-only memory. It's permanent and should not be erased. Next is RAM. Now RAM is very busy. It stores all the data that is currently in use. All the current instructions are stored here. This is a volatile storage. When you turn the computer off, the contents of RAM will be deleted. In addition to RAM, we also have cache. Now, the cache memory stores commonly requested instructions. So it's data that will be used again and again, and it has the fastest access speed of all of them. Now, registers, we visited this when we did the fetch execute cycle. These are a temporary store of a small amount of data within the CPU and they're used as a part of the fetch execute cycle in order to retrieve the instructions that need to be processed. Next, we have secondary storage. Secondary storage is also internal to the computer and it stores all the user's files and applications. So your music library, your video library, all of the programs that you have loaded onto your computer or applications that are on your phone are stored in the secondary storage. And when they need to be used, they'll be retrieved and stored in RAM while the computer is running. This also has fast access speeds compared to the external storage, but not as fast as the main memory. And it's important because without this storage, we wouldn't be able to save any of our files anything. We'd have to start everything again every time we use the computer. This is also non-volatile. So when you turn off the computer, the data will still remain. There are two main types of secondary storage that we use, and that includes the hard disk drive, or HDD, and the solid state drive, SSD. Here you can see an example of a solid state storage. You'll notice that it's very thin. It has no moving parts that allows it to be much thinner. Here is a hard disk drive. You can see it's a little bit thicker. This works with a, a magnetic disk inside. And this is a moving part. It means it takes up more space and it's less durable because it has moving parts which are more likely to break than an SSD would. Next we have offline storage. So the offline storage is completely external to the computer. 
So it must be mounted or attached to the computer. And you can see here, this um, external hard drive has a USB port. Our DVDs, CDs, and optical discs of all kinds will have some sort of disk drive in order for them to be read. A flash memory would also attach with a USB port. And the SD card would also have some sort of SD port or external reader that could be used. It stores all the files in a portable format. It's specifically designed to be moved around. And it also has the slow access speed. This is also non-volatile. So when we turn it off or we detach it from the computer, the data will not be lost. Well, <laughs> as long as you've saved. And examples of this include the external hard drive. It's really important that you use the word external because we have HDD and SSD as our secondary storage. So when we come to examinations, we have to use the word external. It's really important. It's outside of the computer. It's external to the computer. Next is optical storage. That's all the CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. And then lastly is our solid state storage. Uh, which includes the flash memory and thumb drives, as well as the SD and memory cards. Now, it's really important, you may notice the USB symbol on here, and quite often we refer to this as a USB. So even myself, I might say, oh, has anyone got a USB that I can save to? But this is bad practice, and it's very important in examination that we recognize USB is the universal serial bus. This is the type of connection that is used and a data transfer method. It's not a memory stick device. So when we talk about this as a storage in examinations, we need to make sure that we say flash memory or thumb drive. So that's a brief overview of our three main types of storage. Go back and review them if you need to re-familiarize yourself and to learn the different types. And next, we're going to have a look at some examination questions. So here's an example exam question from a past paper for the IGCSE syllabus with Cambridge. And it says that Nadia uses several types of computer storage for her homework and other projects. Five examples of computer storage are given. Tick to show if the computer storage is primary, secondary, or offline. If you want to pause the video now to complete this yourself, go ahead and then we'll show you the answers. So the first thing that we're going to see here is the solid state drive, the SSD. Now this question might cause some people problems because you may want to go with offline storage. However, it's missing one important word in order to be offline and that word's external. So the fact that it is just a solid state drive would mean that it must be internal to the computer. And if it's internal to the computer, then it will be a secondary memory. Next is our Blu-ray disc. Well, the disc, we can hold it. We physically hold that. We store them, or maybe we used to. You might not have too many of them today, but a Blu-ray disc is a physical device and that makes that an offline storage. Next is our USB flash memory. That's the same idea. This is going to be a plug-in memory device. And therefore, because it's mounted to the computer, it's external to the computer, and it is an offline storage. Next is our random access memory or RAM. That's our main memory. All main memory is primary. So that is a primary memory device. And lastly, our read-only memory, again, external to the computer and a part of main memory, which makes it our primary memory. Okay, here's a more complicated one. We need to now take these words and put them into the correct place within this paragraph of text. Now, you may notice that there are nine different words and only six correct terms are required. So you might want to, first of all, when you approach this exam question, just read through all of the different options that are available um, and get an idea of exactly which ones are likely to be used. So for example, here, the word online 
uh, stands out to me as not relevant to this chapter and so I would immediately disregard this. Now the other ones, maybe. So let's start on this first line and it says a computer has two different types of memory. Now immediately you might think, hold on, aren't there three different types? And that's a good point, so you should stop and think about that. It says a computer has two different types. Well, remember there are only two different types of memory that are actually internal to the computer. The third type is external and has to be mounted. So we can also take away offline. So now we're down to only seven terms, which is going to make this a lot easier. So our two main types of memory would be primary and secondary. So let's read this first sentence. Something memory is not directly accessed by the CPU, but it allows users to store data that can easily be accessed by applications. So which one is not directly accessed? Well, that is secondary because only primary memory is directly accessed by the CPU. Secondary memory does not access the CPU. And we also know that it does store the data, such as files and applications. So our first answer is secondary. Next it says there's two examples of this type of memory. So those two different examples were our hard disk drive and or solid state drive. In this example, it won't matter if you put HDD or SSD first. Either answer order is fine. Now, the second type of memory is, well, there's only two types inside of the computer. We've already identified secondary, so we can assume that this one will be primary. But before we agree to that, let's double check the next line. So it says this memory is directly accessed by the CPU. So we know that is definitely a primary memory. Only primary memory is directly accessed by the CPU. So next it says it allows the processor to access data and instructions that are stored in this memory. Two examples of this memory are, well, we know four different examples. Our four examples are registers, cache, RAM and ROM. Well, on our list, only RAM and ROM are available, and that's what we'll put into here now. And that's a successful question. Six full marks. This last question is the most complicated uh, because it's asking you to write completely from yourself. So, for this, you're going to want to make sure that you can give an example of each type of storage and that you know how it's used. And when we talk about how it's used, you need to be able to describe with an example. So if you want to pause the video now and take a moment to write down your possible answers, and then we'll go through all the possible responses and where you would get the marks. So the first answer could be RAM. So a random access memory. And this is a volatile main memory inside the computer. So the key things I wanted to mention here is that it's a main memory. Uh, I mentioned that it's volatile because that's a common description for RAM and any extra description we can put in is very good. I also made sure that I've written this in full sentences. And that's important too because sometimes maybe, maybe you can get a hold of a mark scheme and you might see that mark schemes are listed with bullet points and think that a bullet point is an acceptable way to answer a question but it's not. Mark schemes are designed for the teacher and the examiner. They're not designed for the student. So we're looking for full sentence answers and not giving a full sentence answer could cost you marks. So RAM is a volatile main memory inside of the computer. And the important description here is that it stores the data currently in use you must mention currently in use if you want to get the mark. Our next example, ROM. So ROM is a non-volatile main memory inside the computer. 
So by identifying the volatile versus non-volatile between ROM and RAM, I've taken essentially the same sentence because both are main memory inside the computer, but I've clarified that this is a non-volatile, so the data will not be lost when the computer is turned off. And I've also described what it does. So it stores the computer's start of instructions or the BIOS. Let's see another example, cache. The cache memory, what does that do? Well, that is an, again, another volatile main memory inside the computer. So I've used the same sentence again, started it. Cache is a volatile, so volatile, non-volatile. This is volatile main memory inside of the computer. And this one is storing the frequently used instructions that allows for faster processing. So that's three good examples that would get you marks within this examination paper. Registers are also a primary storage, but I would avoid using them in this sort of question because really we can keep this for the fetch execute cycle. And in this instance, they're really looking to see more of your understanding of ROM and RAM, and they would be the first options that I would choose. Next is our secondary memory. Now that's our hard disk drive or solid state drive. Either one of those would be an acceptable answer. I've put them together on this line because the explanation of their use is identical. And the important part when you do this explanation is that you don't only just explain what it does, but you give a real life example of how it could be used. So we know that it stores the files and the applications. You can learn that as a sentence, but the examination board wants to know that you understand what that means. So complement it with an example. So here I've said that it could be where you store your music library. Next is our offline storage. Multiple different answers. This one has the most answers. Any external offline storage, physically held storage device that you can think of would be acceptable in this answer. And again, they have the same use. They can all be described in the same way. And similar to the secondary storage, they're devices that store files and applications. But this time, when you give your real world example, try to think of an example of a reason that you would be portable. So why would you need to take a file from one computer to another? So my example, I went with a student example. That's probably the easiest one for you. A student example here might be saving a word processing document or a presentation that you might use for a certain class. So I've said here for English class. And that's how to get six marks on a written question. Good luck.